Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to show you the memory CLI game I made in Java. And it's made in plain Java, so it is relatively simple setup. And I will first showcase how the game works, and would then go through most of the code. But in general, to learn from this, I would highly recommend you have a look at the link I will leave in the description, where you can see all the code yourself. But in general, I just have a very simple CLI game, where I am showcasing a game state then have, in this case, seven indexes or eight indexes from zero to seven, where I can either, or where I can input my index I want to see. For example, I would like to see index zero and one. It will then showcase that at index zero, I have a C and index one, I have a B. And it's kind of like a memory game where you need to find the two pairs matching. And in this case, you just have a very simple combination of letters. So I have two A's, two B's, two C's, and two D's. So let's see at index zero, one, we had C, B. Let's have a look at two, three. We have D, A. So actually no combinations yet. Let's look at four, five. We had a, a at four. And if I'm just gonna be cheating a bit, we also had an A at three. So we can now do three and four. And we can see that our pick had the A and A, three and four. And now the game state has been changed where previously it wasn't changed at all, but now it has been changed into having an A at three and four. Let's look at five and six. So we can see we have a B and a D. So I can't bother to actually remember where we have our stuff. Let's go back and look where we had uh, had a B at one and a B at five. So I can have the one and five. We can now see the games they have been populated. So we now have all our A's and our B's. Let's look at six and seven. We have a D and a C. Let's stop the cheating. Let's look at zero and two. We had a C at zero and a C at seven. So we do zero, seven. We now only have our two and our six left. And at the end, what has been filled, I won. And I print how many turns it took me to win. In this case, it took me 10 turns. I doubt that's pretty good, but that's more or less the game. And just to go through the code, just talk about the basic concepts. As you just saw, I have a points scale and I have a turn scale, which kind of kept. I then simply have just some values, which are used to some of my calculations. The board length, those three by three, board size, which ended up being nine spots, minus one because it has to be an even number, I use a random. I then have a few board states, I have the game board, which is the one being printed with all the indexes. I then at first have an empty memory board, which is where I will input my combinations randomized. And as mentioned, then I have my memory options, my AA, BB, CC, DD. Then have a play game, which is a simple for loop, while true, I play the game. I have the inputs using a scanner for my indexes. But actually more interesting, let's first have a look at the setup for the memory board, which is actually relatively simple. So we go through the board size minus one, so eight times. And we then simply get our memory option from our memory option. So at first we're gonna be looking at the A. We then get a random position. We then check if the position is not equal to empty, empty string, which means if there's already something at this specific position, find a new one. If there's not, just put my memory option at this position. We're doing this eight times to just randomly put our options into our board and we then have a random board each time. So this game is also gonna be random each time. It's not the same board, it's a newly randomly created board each time. The other thing that's kinda interesting we then have a board setup, we print the game state, we use a print board method, which is simply go three times and print each row. And we're just simply using a printf, which allows us to find that we have a string, 
another string with some spacings, another string with some spacings, and a new line. And we then simply input the three values from our board. And then lastly, the other method, which is kind of interesting, is that we have a show two options, which takes our two indexes from our scanners as our input, as our parameters. It then simply extract these two picks from our memory board, which is kind of like the solution, which we just created before. And we then create a game state board, which is a clone, which is the one being printed at the top, because it's a clone based on the state, but adding our two inputs. And we then very simply check if the two inputs are the same. So if we actually pick correctly, we then gen change our game board to be our game state we had previously. So we go through a loop where we simply check at these two picks. If these two picks are correct, into input them into the, like, the main board, which we're using all the time. And that is the main game loop, which then simply just run until we have four points. And every time we get pair correct, we get a point. This simple setup of the game have a few problems, though we do not really take care of. For example, right now, if I input the same index twice, it will then see our two indexes as the same value. And it then goes, oh, you input the same value, which means you found a pair, but we didn't. So our game state is actually changed. So now we have a game state where we only have, where we have uneven like correct number and solutions. So that's a mistake. And we have another error. If we input an index that is larger than our option, so zero to seven, we get an index out of bounds. But that's two really simply simply simple problems that could be taken care of by simply just checking on our inputs. But otherwise, that is my simple setup of a memory game in Java with a CLI interface, command line interface. And if you enjoyed this quick showcase, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful 